السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام و اللہ Sayyidi, what about when while reciting knots, one gets an immense feeling of sadness and yearning and love of Rasulullah is overwhelming and one ends up in crying uncontrollably. Is that a tajalli to be hidden and not expressed? What should one do to hide since it is very uncontrollable? Yeah, no, this is a, a part of that same understanding that when you fine tune the heart and you have this immense love for Prophet and your heart is not in your control. So you express it, the sense of crying and sadness and this immense love for Prophet is no problem. But if it becomes loud <laughs> and now you're, you're getting attention from people, you take yourself to somewhere else so that nobody is seeing you. If you're alone in your room. Because everything that we do, if the nafs begins to take a part of it, then its barakah and blessings are lost. So those whom scream from ecstasy, cry in, in, in extreme loudness, none of that is, 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 is admirable. It's best to keep our crying to ourself, our sadness within the heart. And when we're alone, you can scream as much as you want because you're not doing it for the show of people. Because the state of crying can become crushingly powerful. That they go into sujood and they cry out with every cell of their body for their, for their forgiveness that Allah forgive them. That is the extremely powerful experiences if they're done alone. If you're in a room of people, then the nafs is now participating in, in that expression. The same way with the good side where they scream out the turrets and they scream out uncontrollable phrases of Islam but this not, it is not accepted. The, the perfected guides teach the servants and the students, don't do that, hold it and disconnect at that time if you feel like this is going to be something you're doing. So that not to distinguish yourself as something different and don't allow your nafs a part of of, of the good deed and the good tajalli that coming to you, inshaAllah. So other tariqahs they don't have that control but in Naqshbandiyyat al aliyah that there was a very strong discipline upon themselves. So that's why we don't have the, the uncontrolled utterances. And at that same state the Naqshbandi shaykhs are taught not to talk in the, that tajalli. And that's why all of a sudden you may be under a hall or spirit. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Spiritual tajalli and if you start to speak in that state of hal wa ana al-haqq and I am now this, I am that, that's not allowed because you create an immense amount of confusion and that's now the nafs taking a part of that. So again Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah has a discipline that don't, don't do these types of things. So they're trained on how to disconnect and, and to, to control the emanation coming into their heart inshaAllah and their shaykhs control it, right? Shaykhs are controlling the ones that you don't see are controlling how much of a vibration so that not to flip this one outside of the realm of… because they're all responsible too that if you send an overwhelming tajalli then of course the person's going to go into a difficulty. So the perfection of the, 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 cha the shaykhs is that the golden chain that coming all of them are under the same discipline, don't, don't send more than they can absorb. So that this person you'll throw him into a different aesthetic condition. So everything is coming with a discipline and governed and a sort of a, a governed tajalli so that it's not something just wild coming down inshaAllah.
Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam, Uh, how can we help ourselves from expressing anger during this type of Jalali Tajalli? These are all in the meditation books here. You have to get the meditation book. And these are all basic understandings that uh, you have to keep wudu, keep your taweezes. And when you're feeling angry go make wudu and, and leave the area to be by yourself. Don't be around people when you're feeling angry. That's why she, the, the tariqah teaching is you, you never argue with anyone. So when, when tajallis are coming and people are angry, there's no sitting and talking with anyone. Immediately leave the space, isolate yourself, so process your energy so that not to get into a conflict and, and now shaitan entered into that tajalli. So that, that has to have its discipline. So when the jalali comes then the energy is, is very Allah's might. It will bring out the person's shaitan, so any energies they have within them will bring out all their shaitans because they can't control that energy, that energy burning their own devils and then brings out the devils of other people that can't control that energy that's coming out. So that's what we described on holy nights. Is when the, the lunatics come. So that's why they would call lunatic is that on full moons, well we know the reality of a full moon, it's a full tajalli. That's why fasting on the white nights was a, a night of immense grace and blessings where well, the same is the reality of the tajalli, the lights and the energies. When the full moons come there's an immense amount of reflective energy from Divinely Presence. Not from the physical moon only but the station of the spirituality in which it represents. The physical is just a sign, you say, oh it's lit, it's full, here we go tajallis are coming. That's how Allah wanted to us to understand, see you see it's lit otherwise it was only spiritual you would never know when the moon is full. So it's not the actual light of the moon only but it is. But the spiritual representation of that full moon on how the tajalli comes. But the dunya completely affected by that full moon. The police say crime is up, the hospitals say that emergency room violence is up. Why? Because the devils can't take that full light coming out onto the earth, inshaAllah. So we practice and keep these energies and understand how to use these energies. That's why the meditation timeless reality that we should have, we should have the timeless reality, we should have read the timeless reality and uh, keep that as the encyclopedia of our reality. A time may come where the internet will be off, they'll ban everything, they'll cut everything and you won't have a time to call Amazon at that time, uh, Amazon will be closed. So things are coming in which they'll be shut down everywhere. So what you have is what you got and if you don't have it, you don't got it, will be very difficult to, to find it. And that is uh, that we are accountable for our time, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Say the again, can the tajalli take the form of immense pain and pressure on the head and shoulders? Yeah, of course. The, the tajalli is, is an energy and anytime you time an energy you can feel burning, you can feel heat, you can feel pain because one, inability to process the energy and two, there may be many obstructions within people. That people have many different creatures living within them and when these energies come they don't necessarily want to, the creatures living within people, the energy living within people, they don't necessarily want to vacate. Like a tenant that's been squatting and, and hasn't been paying rent, humans are like that. They are like a, a palace from paradise but they have many creatures that are living within them that they have picked up over time. As soon as they begin to meditate and enter into the circles of zikr, if they have that ability, well the energies of the zikr, the tajallis, the meditations, all of those have an immense power and they begin to 
throw out all the unwanted tenants, back pain, head pain, neck pain, body pain, uh, organ pain, everything because they're everywhere and they're not leaving, that's obvious. So we always have to think of something as being obvious. Of course the energy is going to come and cause many disruptions in the character, the body, the organs, everything until it gets cleaned. And then it also has an inability to process energy. If you're not reading the meditations and you don't read on how to breathe and how to pass the energy to bring it in, how to cool yourself off, how to ground your energy. And we talked also about then the holy sunnah of Prophet was for that. So anyone who's in difficulty then were they following the sharia, right? So they, are they keeping their head covered or they're keeping their wudu or they, are they keeping a dress of modesty? Do they have the understanding of all the, the aspects of the holy sunnah and the majestic sunnah? Because those were all a safeguard of energy and the processing of energy, the deflection of negativity, all of, the, of what Prophet brought. Imagine he didn't bring a fashion statement onto this earth, it's not a fashion statement. He brought immense energy teachings for an unseen world that we would have conflict with. He's a representative and the king of all uh, paradises coming onto a physical realm to teach us, I'm going to bring to you your defense mechanisms on this earthly realm because you're not from here, you're from my paradises. But for your journey onto this earth, I've been sent here. I asked Allah to come to here as a mercy for you and, my, and this creation that is of service to the king. Allah created this creation not for Himself, He doesn't need the creation. He created this creation to give a kingdom to His king. Otherwise if, I give, if, I, if you go and Allah says, I'm going to make you the king of all creation, what kind of king has no kingdom? But Allah is creating all this creation saying, it's yours because I created you as a king and I made this kingdom for you and all I want is you, you can have this creation. So then this king is sent upon this realm, this tiny little earth for us to understand our journey and say, here are all your tools. You don't, you don't come from here, you come from somewhere that's majestic and mighty and upon this earth wear like this, put like this, do like this, this should be your protection for your journey on this earth until you return back into the heavens into Allah's kingdom inshaAllah. Hmm. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Wa Alaikum As uh, Sayyidi from yesterday's talk you mentioned three points that that energy can enter, feet, belly button and the head. Does a toe fungus relate it to that? No. Good, good question, alhamdulillah. That all, all fungus is a and even fungus amongst on top of food is an energy, right? So mold or energies and if we leave a piece of bread, not anymore because the dajjal bread is not any longer bread, it stays now for weeks. But in old times or if anyone bread bakes something fresh and edible, you put it out and what happens after a couple of days? The mold comes but more is that if you put it out and meditate and then put your hand, you feel a stinging around your hand. Why? Because there's a negative energy is coming around and trying to take and absorb the energy of that food because they take by their breath, they take by absorbing an energy from it. And that's why Prophet described for us that cover your food in water. Once you cover it there's a, a hikmah and a wisdom in which the creatures cannot take from it. So they used to make cups with little covers, the Turkish keep that sunnah and they sell these cups with covers. 
so that you cover your drink at any moment so that nothing nefarious or bad or bad energy is trying to enter. And at the same time food and like Moroccan keep that sunnah, they have special types of dish where it has like a cone that they put on top of the dish. That was the same concept is that the food must always be covered. If you're not eating from it, you cover it. So they have like something that they put over that. And it's an understanding from energy but when people left the understanding of energy, what happened is, oh nothing matters and leave everything. So as soon as you leave everything, every type of negativity is trying to take from that because they don't see the hijab, they don't see the, the covering. This is how Allah created that creation. So when you wear a hijab and you wear a kufi, you're like the dish. You have to cover yourself and as a result Allah made the rules and the laws. As soon as that one is covered those creatures can no longer take from that head. They can't take from that person's energy. When they don't have their head covered, why Allah gives the rules He gives? It's like when you have children in, in your life, you understand that you tell your children, don't, don't play in the kitchen. And you say, why you don't play in the kitchen? You say, because you're going to get burned. So what do you mean you're going to get burned? And then they seem to be like stubborn, you don't understand. And they say, see these hot dishes and hot pots, give me your hand, give me your hand. I say, no, 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 give me your hand. I said, you want to put your hand in the hot pot? I said, no, 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 I don't. So then you understand this hot pot may fall on you. And out of love you train your children, don't play in the kitchen, don't run around the kitchen because all these hot dishes if they fall on you, God forbid. Well, my life will be destroyed because you're burned and then you, you'll be burned and it's horrible. Allah has the same love for us that teaches us by means of do this or you'll be punished. But why Allah wants to punish somebody? But is a warning for somebody that, look you don't seem to understand your creation. That when you go out something is eating your head. So the shaykhs and whom are trained in energy as soon as they have a hat off for some reason they feel things are crawling on them. So immediately they have to re-put their, their cover back on, the hijab is on. Hijab is a protection and it means protection. So it means that there's energies that are feeding off of us because we're like a piece of bread in a food chain. There are creatures that you don't see and as a result we don't see them, we're like a food for them. All night long these creatures are all over people and if they don't keep their head covered the creatures are going to where your main energy points, right? Because they feed off of energy. Why do they want to go where there's no energy? They want to go where the most amount of energy is being brought in and brought out of that person. So when they're sleeping their soul that is moving and energy points on their body that are most active the top of their skull so then they should be sleeping with head cover. And that's why old times every person had a head cover and they have pictures of these cartoons they look like cones, they would put the head cover on and it would go all the way back. And they slept fully covered because of the night difficulties and the, and the bad energies that come at night and you become like a kebab for them. You're just lying in your bed and they're trying to eat all the energy of that person. And that's why Prophet brought all of these realities that as soon as you cover your head they can no longer take from your head. And that's most important in the bathroom, that's where shaitan is eating the, the head of people. So it means these are, these are big energy battles. Same then with communities that, that expose their belly button because the womb and the rahim is the haramain, so the Kaaba. On, on a human being and the haramain of, of Mecca, haramain means forbidden, that no forbidden is, is allowed here, is the womb, is the, is the stomach and the belly. As a result there's an energy point coming into the belly of people because Allah left us a belly button to remind us where we came from, that you are connected to something and you were connected to something. And in meditation when they meditate they feel a spiritual belly button connecting them back into that source of power. And at all times there's a qudra flowing into their belly from the point of where their belly button in and that's a, a, a secret 
in the reality of who. That when they feel that who is coming, that power of who is coming into their belly button. So these are immense energy points. So then that stomach has to be covered for men and women. Men are not allowed to swim without a shirt on because they have to cover this energy point. That was the hikmah. Now it's not that you don't do it or you're going to be punished. This was for very low level people to understand that, look you're going to be punished means you're going to have a lot of difficulty in this life and in the hereafter. How so? Because if this energy overtakes you, you're going to make all the wrong cho choices in life and you're not going to achieve what Allah wanted for your eternal journey. And the same example you tell your children, please study and says, oh, why are you always tell me study, don't study. And then when they don't study, they come out and they can't get a job, they can't find any way to feed themselves. Then you say, now what? Look, look what I told you, you didn't listen to me, now at this age you have no education and no ability to feed yourself, isn't this a punishment? Don't you feel how, how difficult this is? And the same hikmah, Allah wants for us the best life, healthiest life, the best reality for our paradises. So everything that Prophet brought was not a threat of Jahannam but should have been an understanding of how to reach our reality. It's how you view everything. If you view it with love you understand that it was all from love that I want you to achieve a safety on this earth because you're in a devil's domain but I want more so for you to achieve your light and your energies. Remember the throttle. There's a devil always pushing our energy down so that we don't achieve the 90 trillion volts of energy that Allah created us with. So then these points are important. So everything is fungus and mildew, everything is a negative energy. So now what do you see the most amount of contact with your body and your, your physical application on this dunya is the feet. So this is a very easy energy understanding. So your vertical horizon and your energy is on your spine, this is the alif of your body. So this spine is where the energy is flowing from your heart. From that spine its connection to the spine and your energy is where? It's your feet. Because of the power that Allah sends onto the spine you have the ability to stand on two feet that doesn't make any sense because any two things that you put on in life and just put two things up like that, it falls over. How are you being held on this earth? How on a, on a horizon that's flat two vertical sticks are standing up, means you're being held. Allah's given a miracle for insan that you have an ability to balance yourself because the energy that's coming upon the spine touching this horizon and this is a vertical energy that's coming. So as a result these energy points all the way down to where the feet touches this earth and then the earth is where the lowest and dirtiest levels of energies are flowing. So then what Prophet brought for us is wudu, wash your feet. And then people don't understand, why I have to wash my feet? Well because this is your, your, your first contact to the worst energy. The energy that flowing on the, on the ground, the lowest level of electromagnetic flow of energy is on the ground and your feet are continuously in contact, continuously in contact with that. So what happens then? This energy if you, if you watch the, the venom, this energy comes on your feet and begins to move and then crawl up your legs. So the servant who never trained in wudu and washing and ablution, the, the, the divinely washing of, of taking away of negative energies, these negative energies then are flowing up their being. They go up their leg and start causing all sorts of vascular and leg problems, knee problems and then their movement is to go towards the spine. They enter into the liver, they enter into the kidneys and then they begin to enter into the spine in which the biggest clash is on that spine and the lower vertebrae of the spine which are filled with pain clinics. Right now in the world I think the pain clinics, their biggest customers are back pain, why? 
or because nobody understood these energy flows and the reality of energy. As a result horrific energies are coming up their legs and then hitting onto the spine. So they don't have to be religious, God has given a God-given gift of energy moving on the spine. So then this energy is, is fighting where? Right onto the spine. So the heavenly energy is coming, the lower energy is coming and then right at the spine is where they're having this immense amount of conflict. And in the front part it's the belly. So Prophet described that the conflict of insan is right at their belly. So we described the front is your belly button which is an immense power of who coming and then your clash from your feet and then from the tajallis of the heart. So then your yin and yang and the conflict of insan is the positive energy dressing them and all the negative energies of the dunya trying to hold them. So definitely the feet will have a tremendous amount of, of conflict. So when they put wudu or if they have these fungus issues then the medication that is, is best and inshaAllah works for them, he said, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Raheem and you put antifungal. Antifungal medication the one of the most powerful is tea tree oil because these creatures don't like tea tree oil. So then they put tea tree oil inside the nail with the cotton and that's direct tea tree they don't mix it with water and you put that inside the nail all around the nail let it to dry and keep spraying with the sprayer tea tree oil so that that fungus to clear and those creatures to stop trying to attack the feet, inshaAllah. And if they have to take medicines and other things that's some things they have to take anyways but the treatment of negative energy on that level is going to be tea tree oil. So any use of tea tree oil is, is uh, an antifungal and anti-parasite because these are parasites and these are the creatures causing these funguses. And we described that's why in, in these sicknesses that are coming that these people were trying to take medicines for, these were parasites. These creatures are parasites and they want to attach themselves to humans as a parasite to feed off of the human energy that they don't have. And that humans for them will be a vehicle in which to enter in and to… it's an eternal power source. We're trying to make machines that have power that never die off like solar power. For them it's a human being, they found these are very powerful creatures, they have a, an energy source that is inexhaustible and they as a parasite want to enter into humans and occupy them. So the medicines that they're giving is to weaken the immune system which Allah, Allah has given us as an immune system to push them out. They want to weaken the system and enter in. So anti-parasitical medicines attack what they're trying to do and now you can't find that medicine anywhere. They don't allow the anti-parasite medicine, they mock it well, because they know it's a parasite and they don't want anyone else to know it's a parasite but they're parasites. So anti-parasite medicines were actually stopping these sicknesses, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, During meditation when energy is coming to you can cats also absorb that energy and reduce the heat I feel? Can what? Can cats? Can cats absorb the energy? Absorb the energy and reduce Cats or cat? Cat. Cat like meow? Meow. <laughs> yeah. Or hat like I have on my head. <laughs> meow. <laughs> meow. <laughs> okay, okay. Can cats... Uh, uh, yeah, definitely the animal kingdom is all based on energy. When the people's energies are so bad the animals don't want humans near them. 
So when we were growing up they had these horrible amusement parks for dolphins and whales. With those creatures are extremely sensitive to energies and and anyone who wants to understand the human ability, look to what Allah created from these creatures. That this dolphin has uh, advanced medical electronics within them, the sonar. They can send out sound waves and they can see with these sound waves and they send it out and they receive back the signal of a sound wave. Well, we can't even build these technologies correctly like that. How Allah put in these different animals, these different realities so that one day we would see our potential. We said the other day the salamander is an animal that produces so much energy that when the scientist said it loses its leg and its tail, it begins to vibrate an energy that they saw because they don't understand why it's happening. They saw the spike in energy means it has an internal qudra that it activates and immediately the leg and the, and the tail is growing back. It has the ability to grow back its limbs. What Allah is teaching us? Well, of course if you took your voltage up you would have the ability to heal yourself. But shaitan has no interest in you understanding your voltage so he keeps lowering you until you basically die sick and, and fall. But Allah just sent us with an immense amount of power. So when you go to somebody who has high voltage, well they're more powerful than a salamander. So of course their zikr and their energies and attending their majlis sends an immense amount of voltage out that immediately can begin to resonate and bring the vibration of the person to be healed. If Allah wants them to be healed, He wants you to be, كُنُوا مَا صَادِقِينَ إِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ have a consciousness. وَقُنُمَا صَادِقِينَ Keep the company of sadiq truthful servants. Why? Because one day you may find out, oh these truthful servants have an immense amount of energy. And as a result, yes you can become like a salamander that as soon as you're meditating and contemplating there's an immense amount of energy flow that come back and rejuvenate. They have the ability to revive dead hearts. Because their energy is very focused, why do they want to revive your toes? Is that the first place somebody would send energy to revive your toes? No. But the most difficult is to revive a dead heart, a heart that has no hope, a heart that gave up on this world. All it takes but five minutes watching their association, if you watch that association within five minutes these energies are flowing into your heart. And they have the ability to revive a dead heart in which nothing on this earth can do that. You can bring an external uh, emergency room people and they put up, oh, clear the room, boom, oh, that's not going to revive your heart. This revival of the heart is at the depth of the soul. So means they're doing this on a daily basis. They revive the heart with energies, they sustain the hearts of those whom are following them with these energies. As a result, they have an intense amount of energy, they begin to have an intense amount of himma and zeal and the want to do better and the wanting to do more. And as a result of the energy coming within their heart, their soul is revived and they don't feel this world is helpless and that their life is hopeless. That help and hope has entered back into their heart. Now it's just a matter of struggling through our existence for God's satisfaction. But definitely these creatures feel it. So then when we were growing up they were tolerating humans. Now when my kids are growing up they closed all these parks because those animals were eating everything. When the trainer entered the water they were so angered by the energy of people. You know they were patient and, and had sabr and their patience ran out that when the trainer started to enter the water you would see the killer whale take the trainer, shake him around and throw him, take him under water and kill them. Because they don't like the human energy of all these horrific people all day long coming, yelling, screaming, shouting and sending their energy to them. You know you're coming for a show but you're coming to energy creatures and they're absorbing the horrible energy of the audience. And what did they do? They 
they attacked and killed their trainers because they don't know how to process that type of energy. They weren't meant for that, they were meant to be in the ocean where they would be free and they'd be clean in Allah's oceans from these energies. Then they went into the ocean and began to do military experiments with sonar and sonar vibrations. And as soon as they would hit their devices, the internal GPS for these creatures would be destroyed, wiped out. They would wipe out the iron within their brain and the ability for the creature to coordinate his GPS because they, there are advanced GPS systems. The iron within the creature gives them an energy signal and the coordinates of where they're supposed to be swimming. When the military tests these equipments in the ocean, all of a sudden you see like 200 whales have come up on shore and they died because they don't know where they're going. And their internal systems have been fried by mankind's testing of things in the water and the ocean. So definitely all the creatures are feeling everything. In the last days we said the time will come where Allah will be so angered by humans that He will give the command of all His creatures, eat them, that they are now your food source. Have you ever wondered why nothing is eating you? But Allah is not giving them permission. We sit in a house surrounded by millions and trillions of bugs and creatures and crawly things all around us. Why don't all of them come to think that we are food? Because Allah's mercy upon insan. But when a day comes when Allah lifts His mercy, all those creatures want to eat people because the command will come, eat them, except my servants whom they are sincere and Allah loves them. Allah won't let even the worm to eat them in their grave and that's why you see them to be fresh in their graves and in their burials. Because nothing Allah nothing He wants for them to eat them. So it means these are, these are immense realities in which creatures they don't, they can't tolerate the energies of people. But now Divine energies then all the creatures love that because these are Divine the praisings. Cats they pick up all the subtle energies, they pick up and they see all the beings. That's why they're running around the home looking at all the corners and everywhere because they're seeing all these spiritual beings within a vicinity or residence. So yes, all animals pick up positive and Divinely blessed energies. Even the creatures all around the house, when Divinely souls come and Divinely people who have a love for the Divine, all the creatures around their home are around them. Birds come onto their areas, the squirrels come around them, everything comes around them because they feel a serenity and they feel the peace with the Divinely servant where most people will enter into the forest and all the creatures will give a signal, run, one crazy person has entered into this forest because they're threatened by the energy of people. But when Divinely souls enter, we've said before that this is an energy world and we know from the hadith and from teachings that when you enter into a forest the trees are communicating. And they can tell that if an oppressor has entered or Divinely servant by their energy and that the whole internet of the forest are the roots and they're all connected. And all the trees will communicate that a servant of Allah has entered into this forest. And then all the animals will understand a servant of Allah's true servanthood has entered into this forest. And as a result their energies come closer to receive from that tajalli. So no doubt this, this energy world is, is, is immense. That's why Prophet described that when you go to a forest call the azan and that the reward of the azan inside the forest and praying within the forest is 72 times greater than the azan somewhere else. Why? Because of all the spiritual beings want that type of blessing. Because that's, that's no longer uh, availed to them, now it's just the oppression of mankind cutting and destroying all of these, these realities. So everything is alive, everything and everything wants positive energy and everything will react to negative energy and that's why they become more and more angered, more and more sort of oppressed under the energy of their people and, and communities and humanity inshaAllah. 
السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله what do you think is the role of women for dawa and propagating islam in person and charities is there an adab different for women than men Definitely, there's there's always a difference in in the in the dealing of of men and women. In in dawa, women to women, uh, no problem. Women to to post to post about the shaykh to the shaykh, making a profile that is not recognizable as a woman or a man, is acceptable. But to make yourself to be known as a woman and then propagate out to people to communicate with you, it wouldn't happen in the physical world and should never happen in the physical world where you send out women to do dawah to bring men, that, that, that's not the system from the heavens, that's a, a very bad dunya system where they use women to bait people or to trap people into something. Allah doesn't allow that and doesn't operate that way. So everything has to be with a very delicate understanding. There's no reason to try to attract a man towards Islam through you because then that person is not coming to Islam, they're coming to you. So that wouldn't be of any necessity. So there has to be a, a tremendous amount of ethics and understanding that when they go out to do relief work it has to be something safe, they go out hand out the food, they don't need to talk, they don't need to, to engage people to do this or do that. Relief work for those whom are in in greatest difficulty is just give the food. Let them to have seen that people cared for them and give the food. You don't want to make all the homeless people to come to the internet because they don't have that ability and they're not going to come to the centers and, and disrupt everything with a, a chaotic life. I think the guys went out one time and tried to do dawah on a homeless person and he came and broke all the windows. So that that's not necessary. That you're not uh, out there to rescue people's lives and, and bring them to Islam, you're out there to give food. So those whom are in need, we package our foods, we give out the food because Allah asked that of us and that's, uh, that was our duty. It took away a burden from ourselves and from our communities. So the dawah of, of propagating to people, no, is not liked and it, it causes immense amounts of difficulty. If you can put yourself as a profile that's just the tariqah profile and pictures of the shaykhs, that's it, then no problem because there's no communication, you're taking an article, sending it, taking an article, sending it. But alhamdulillah, then it's a common sense that people can understand when, when they're using something through their personal and now it's becoming a personal communication versus veiling themselves as a tariqah operation. And the tariqah then is a tariqah operation and not a personal. No personal messaging, no personal typing, nothing. That's why we operate under the same system. We don't allow any personal emails, any personal texting, any personal anything. Everything has to come through help me at nurmuhammad.com and those people have to understand that there's two, three, four people observing those emails like a doctor's office. So, oh, if you, I, I want to send something only if it's personal, don't send it then. There's nothing personal because it's a doctor's office. There have to be three or four witnesses to the email of what's being communicated and what's the response being. So that, that, that keeps the adab of tariqah. And that's what we said in videos called the devil's playground, internet is a very dangerous place to go now. Because people are direct messaging, texting, send me this, send me your pictures, send me your information. No, 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 don't, don't do any of those. Just keep it on the on the upside. And that's why anyone has a question, they just help me at nurmuhammad.com. They don't have to communicate with anyone else. They just go to help me and then ask the question related to the spirituality and tariqah and know that three or four other people are observing those emails. And alhamdulillah that that becomes a, a clean and, and uh, inshaAllah make Allah to be happy, Prophet to be happy inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi on the topic of energy, if clothing is left on the wash line overnight will this carry negative energies? Yes most definitely, yeah. I saw that a lot in Asia. 
and that was a lot in Singapore. And that was not an Islamic uh, system that the, the clothing of people is a, is a hawa, is a, a desirous thing. Means that we never put our, our privacy ever open to people. So we never saw that before, we don't see it in America anymore because that's maybe a long old system but you, we saw it a lot in Singapore and people would be driving and all along like thousands of apartments they put all of their undergarment on their balconies and on these lines and all their clothing and everything was on these things. It's completely just from energy because we don't want to make like rulings on the, on the video. Just from a sense of energy, do you think that that is acceptable? Common sense tells you, would you put your body or your clothing like that so that everybody sees the clothing, sees what style of clothing that you're wearing, all the inappropriate clothing on there? Common sense tells you, absolutely not. You don't want that energy, you don't want the hasad, you don't want the jealousy, you don't want the desirous envy. So all of the horrible energies that could be activated by something like that. And it could be even now for the sickness of people who… for children because many sick people are, are desirous of everything. So why would you put the, the things of your children or anything out? So our lives are very private. So anybody who has to do something like that, well they would use a hikmah, right? So they would put a line and put a fabric so that nobody can see their balcony and they put a fabric. But they just want the warmth of the sun to come through but no visual of the fabric. Then they can make a line inside that parda so that nobody sees what's being hanged in the balcony. But to just put the line outside on the balcony where every 10,000 people driving on cars and all the apartments see it, I don't think that would be wise and I don't think that that has any positive energy and, and, and benefit. And you can attract a tremendous amount of negative energy inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Please forgive me for my ignorance. Why even after putting into practice all the teachings as per my ability, I still feel blocked in terms of energy? I can't feel the energy coming into me. Please advise me, Ya Sayyidi. <laughs> Best you, you can email that because these are not a question and you don't want a, a, a shaykh talking uh, you know, like this against somebody or advising somebody. So that's something that you email that I'm doing this and this and this and I said you have to be true to yourself. So I gave the example I think last time when they asked that same question that two years into to dealing with healing, zikr, taweez is everything, it's like, I don't know why I'm still sick, I don't know why I'm still sick, I have this experience, that experience. I said, look tell me honestly, what the heck are you doing? other than what we've been teaching. Oh by the way I do Reiki, two years not being truthful to say that. You're doing what? I, mean, I, do, I do healing Reiki. So why would you possibly mix that system with something from paradise? That these practices are not to be mixed with anything, don't add anything to it, don't take any Taweez from anyone, anything that you did, don't mix anything with this practice. It's like going to doctors or, or not even doctors but even if you went to multiple doctors and you took from them all different types of prescriptions, you'd probably be dead within a matter of months. And you didn't tell each doctor what you were doing, right? Because each doctor is going to give you a treatment, give you medication and then observe you. And if each doctor giving you different medications, different observations and you can imagine what type of problem you would be physically. So imagine spiritually when people are not going to even license doctors, oh this person they gave me this oil to drink, oh this person gave me this to recite, oh this grandmother gave me this necklace from a different religion to wear. So these are, these are you know very sort of dangerous things when people don't understand there's a tremendous amount of energy and there's energy beings. So we don't mix the energy beings, you know we don't put on taweez and go to nightclub because there's going to be a lot of horrific energies, right? Because there's demons in there. 
And when you're wearing something from the heavens and the heavens are like, well, why are you going in there? There's going to be a corruption and there's going to be disruption, one in your home because they'll be very angry with you for doing that. So your whole life will start to flip all over the place. So it means everyone has to govern themselves accordingly that, uh, I'm, I'm going to do this, I'm, this is what I'm going to do, this is how I'm going to safeguard myself, I'm not going to mix anything with it and I'm going to do all the things that the shaykh has asked. I'm going to give, I'm going to be of service, I'm going to breathe, I'm going to meditate. There should be no obstruction in the heart but you email and say that, no I did that and nothing with anything else. And inshaAllah then through the emails inshaAllah we can send uh, some correspondence back and forth but we don't want to, to push that out to everybody. So everything is going to be individual but if everyone's doing everything and all their practices then alhamdulillah they should be good to go, the heart comes alive with no problem. But if they're mixing it with other things then that's not something that you know can be handled, especially when they mix it with all these other things that they thought was not that important to talk about. So the person was doing Reiki, he said, why would you mix something like that and that's what's making you sick and that's what's having a tremendous amount of conflict with this energy. Reiki and, and paganism has no place near Islam nor are the creatures that they're summonsing have anything to do with the Islamic spirituality, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum shaykh Walaykum as wa rahmatullah So does all the sudden high fever and shivering can be shaitan attacks? Not necessarily. Hmm. It can be an energy from Allah We just described that people are getting energies through their heart that they cannot handle. Of course fever is a tremendous amount of energy that's a cleansing and it can be coming into the body like a qudra that they heat up and immediately the body can't contain that level of energy and it pushing out many different badnesses. So sickness is, is, a, is a remedy from Allah is a cleansing from Allah So whatever happens then there's a cure for every sickness Allah has a cure. So satanic or shaitanic attack is that they want to attack but at the same time Allah sends an energy and then the fever pushes and purges these negativities away. So no, it's not that simple just say that this shaitanic attack because energies and fevers can be very good that they have a very blessed state in which a lot of qudra is coming upon them and they can't carry it in their physicality, inshaAllah. <laughs> وبصير سورة الفاتحة